And then there is a way, hang on. Spotlight this. Okay, there we go. I know that light in the background makes me look like a silhouette, but that's the best. I might actually switch over here because <laughs> there's really no point in recording. <laughs> that's you're all totally a silhouette, right? So that's you guys can see the background. Feel free to wheel away if you don't want. <laughs> By the way, if anybody wants, Marcus, did you want more coffee? Is that what you got up for? No. Oh, the AirPod is gone, but if somebody, whoever goes next. Okay, thanks, Karen. There's more in the in the pot, so. I'm gonna move over here. How's that? You guys can see me a little better now. <laughs> see Marcus Noah, and <laughs> what was the name of that gentleman who shared last who went to Haiti? Jake. Jake. Yeah. Yep. All right. So a couple of um, sort of, I don't know, logistical things coming up. Um, I feel like I'm really far away from you guys. Um, center myself here. Thanks, Tim. Sorry, people watching on YouTube. Our, our, met, our millions of YouTube followers are very disappointed in the quality of this technology content. Um, so uh, this will be a review for those of you that have been here. But January the 9th, um, we have a, January 9th, we have a big outreach event coming up. It's a hip hop concert, it's gonna be right here in the gym. It'll be our first time setting up our stage and our sound equipment and all that stuff. So uh, next week, we're gonna talk about this a little more formally as far as putting people into places, but be thinking about ways you might be able to volunteer at the hip hop concert. So some examples of things we'll need are greeters, uh, parking lot people as well, who are kind of like parking lot greeters, helping people figure out where to park out there. Um, some set up people beforehand. We're gonna be serving pizza for people that can kind of staff that. And then we're gonna have a registration table as well where people come in just to get people's information and then we're gonna do some door prizes from, from there. So just be thinking about that. And then um, same with the 16th is our first preview service. So I can't believe that's coming up in much less than a month now. Um, but we, we have um, sound equipment on the way. It's all showing up at Tim and Karen's house. So, <laughs> um, uh, and chairs, we ordered 200 chairs. They're on their way here. And it's just a lot of crazy moving parts coming together at once. Um, but January 16th, why don't we, uh, Marcus, can we grab that stack of those little cards? I'm going to hand those around. We have some new folks here. You guys can grab some cards. It's got all this information on it. If you want to um, take a card home and or hand them out to friends. Um, so same with the 16th. Just be thinking about um, ways you might be able to volunteer. Um, we are going to need um, kids, classroom folks for nursery toddler room is one age group. And then K through fifth grade is another age group. Uh, parent, parent update, um, the person we were interviewing, uh, he took a job with another church, sat up at the last minute. Um, and so just a heads up that we're kind of back to square one and we're just gonna be staffing kids stuff as volunteers. That job is still open. And so I think in God's timing, he'll bring us the right person for that. Um, but I think we can handle it too in the meantime. Um, volunteers for teens, we're, we're probably, uh, probably going to do like a teen yeah, uh, kind of conversation probably during the service itself. Um, and so uh, people to help with coffee, uh, again, greeters, parking lot greeters, section leaders. So when I talk about this little, this little horseshoe, I'm going to be recruiting individuals who can wear a name tag, like wear a lanyard and lead just that conversation, those just basically discussion questions within, within those little sections. Um, we're gonna be needing musicians. So Jake is gonna be our one man band. So uh, um, anyone else on Zoom watching, we need musicians. <laughs> Adriel, I'm counting on you to be one of our singers. You don't know that yet, but just the <laughs> Lord spoke to me and told me you'd be singing. So. If you were in a gospel choir in college, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be singing in our band. That's pretty much just how it is. 
Okay. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna do one song in Spanish a week. So I mean, I'm really I'm really leaning hard on you, Adriel. All right. Um, as well as uh, it's sound. So we're gonna be doing people that know sound or want to know sound. AV tech stuff. Um, January fifth, we're having a training here. So. Um, at my old church, the tech expert guy has been really great and is helping us buy all the stuff and then is going to train us on how to set it up and how to use it. So January 5th is a Wednesday. If you're evening, uh, we're going to have dinner provided. It's going to start at 6 p.m. So if you're a music person that might want to help us sound too, um, or just someone that's like, hey, you know, you don't have to be an expert at sound if you just feel like you can be taught. Um, that's something on January 5th to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, so just want to kind of prime the pump a little for some of the, the volunteer stuff that will be coming up for those two days. I mentioned this last week, but we do have a big kind of week and a half in January, more than normal. I think more than uh, it's what I said last week, and I just want to reiterate is I don't want anyone to get burned out. That can happen easily in a church plant. Uh, it, we have a preview service coming up, which is our first one. So there's a lot that has to go into the first one um, as far as setup and, and things like that and just learning the ropes. We're doing the outreach concert the week before to help spread the word about the preview service. But honestly, be discerning. Um, if it feels like coming to everything would burn you out, don't come to everything. Uh, I'd rather you just came to one or two things um, than everything. So with that in mind, here's what's coming up that month. Um, the training on the 5th, all of this, by the way, uh, if you text uh, this number uh, that's on the card, text the word mosaic, you'll get updates. And if you text the word mosaic calendar, you'll get a link and it'll, it'll input all the, all the stuff I'm telling you now will go into your phone calendar automatically if you text mosaic calendar to this. Okay, January 5th, AV training at 6 p.m. That's Wednesday night. January 7th is a Friday. We're going to be canvassing this neighborhood here, so flyers and doors, inviting them to the concert and uh, preview service. It's all in one flyer. We're not knocking on doors. We're just sticking them in like door handles and stuff like that. That's January 7th, Friday evening, but starting at 4.15 while it's still daytime out. January 8th, uh, so I've mentioned this. It's my birthday, so we're, I'm, I'm like sacrificing my birthday to the, the church plant as a fragrant offering to the Lord. Hopefully it just worked out that way. So uh, what that day turned into, rather than just an AV setup day, there's a lot that has to get organized in here for this space to really be usable for us. If you saw our storage room right now, you'd know what I mean. So we're gonna have a day that's an organizing day and also a painting day. We're gonna just kind of put a new coat of paint on the kids' rooms that we're using. We might put a new coat of paint out here, depending on um, if they can match the colors and things like that. I'm not too worried about this room. It's, it's more some of the kids' spaces. Um, so it's turned into a big volunteer day where I'm inviting some other churches to come and help and, and things like that. But we're going to have lunch. Um, we're going to be here from 9 to 3 on January 8th. And kids can come. Kids are welcome to help. My kids love splattering paint on a wall with a roller. And it's always a good time. Um, and um, we're also going to set up that day for AV. So while people are painting and organizing, those AV people that were there on the 5th are going to set up for the concert, which is the next day. So the concert's on the 9th. Um, then January 16th is our preview service. So those AV people are going to set up on the 15th, the day before. Um, since it's so new to us, we want to get it done the day before. So that's what's coming up. Uh, it's a lot, but it's, it's also really exciting. I mean, it's kind of like, okay, if, if you're a sports person, like we've been practicing, this is still like a preseason, you know, game. I know not everybody's in sports metaphors. I apologize, but it's like, hey, this, our grand opening's in April, so that's like the start, right, of the season, you know, it feels like. But this is a preview service. My wife keeps telling me it's just a practice. Don't be stressed out about it. Like, no, it's it's our first, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I hope it is exciting to you. It's exciting to me, um, and it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, we do have, uh, I forgot, I don't have them out because um, it was a crazy morning. We do have Mosaic t-shirts uh, in the storage. So if you're planning to be here for the George Moss concert on the 9th, um, we can pull the t-shirts out at the end and grab a shirt. So uh, any questions on the events of January before I turn it over to Victoria? We good there? Okay, great. 
Uh, Victoria, I'm going to turn it over to you for our uh, devotional for the day. So uh, let me let me spotlight you here. Uh, let's see. I think if I do this, it will help. That didn't work. Hold on. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. There we go. All right. You're up, Victoria. Unmute. Okay, I can do that. Well, I want to say good morning one more time. And it is really, really exciting to see you all come and be a part, even though it's a small group. I was really blessed by the introductions and getting to know some of you a little bit better. And one of the things that struck me that um, as I listened was something that's gonna tie into what I wanna share with regard to how God speaks into what we're trying to do. And um, Ali shared this and I just wanna repeat it because I believe that the journey at Mosaic is to come against what society has taught us. And the way you depicted those young kids at the park who, who had no inhibitions around being with each other because they were just kids being kids without the instruction that this society has given with regard to differences. And that just kind of stuck with me when you said that, Ali, I appreciate you pointing that out because it is the truth that um, this is something that society has given us that we're having a real difficult time breaking away from as we have to break from the organization of society to pit us against each other and to have us all in different categories, different neighborhoods it is just really something that I believe is a stench in God's nostrils. And as I was thinking about this this past week, I was thinking about Hebrews eleven six, with regard to um, God is a rewarder of those who are seriously looking for him. And I believe that as we go on this journey together at Mosaic, we are seeking God's way versus society's way. Because society has done a really, really good job of distracting us from God's plan. And I believe God is going to really reward us for deciding that, you know what, I don't have to continue with that. And I believe that what is going to happen is wherever we're at, and I'm going to use the analogy of uh, light bulbs, wherever we're at, if we're at a 25 watt and we desire to seek God and we desire to know just exactly what it is he wants to say to us, he will increase that wattage and we'll find ourselves slowly gaining more wattage to hear and understand the words of God. Those of us who deal with at a 50, we could go to 100. We don't know where God is going to take us. But if we seek God, if we really make up our minds and say, okay, Lord, there's some evident things that are going on in our society that I feel led to seek your kingdom and hear and see what you want to be heard and seen. And that leads me to this passage that I want to really um, challenge you with this morning, because what I have found as I have been on this road of anti-racism is that there are scriptures that I grew up with. I heard the Bible stories and I didn't see those scriptures in the way that I see them now. And the one that I want to highlight 
this morning is the one that's in Acts 10 and the story of Peter and how God revealed to Peter that the ways in which he had been trained as a child, as a small growing disciple, were not the ways that he wanted him to hold on to. And I think this whole passage of Acts 10 is just really fascinating, the way the spirit of God just reveals some, some new added insights and increases that wattage. And this is something else in this growth process that we want to remember that it is the spirit of God that is teaching us, that's increasing this wattage, that's helping us to look at scriptures in different ways. And that's my challenge to you this morning as I read these two verses out of Acts. And I want to encourage you to even go back this week and read this whole passage of Acts 10 and just ask the spirit of God how he's moved you from societal ways and societal thinking to his ways and how he moved Peter in this way. But at the end of the story, Peter says, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. So the Holy Spirit went through a whole lot of mental gymnastics with Peter, preparing for Peter to say this. But at the end, he said, I see now God doesn't have any favorites. God didn't select a group of people over another group of people. He firmly gave us his ideal that all of those who seek him, all those who come to know him through his son, Jesus, who then possess the spirit of God, those are the people that he accepts and he wants to grow in. And I am just thrilled with the opportunity to be a part of a group of people who want to get to that place of seeing how God sees us so that we see each other communally as God sees us and we see our own selves individually as God sees us. And we make an intentional commitment to abandon those ways that the world has taught us and go back to those childhood experiences that Allie pointed out that show that little people can get together and not pay attention to this at all. But we as adults have drank the Kool-Aid that this society has fed us and really distorted God's plan for each and every one of us. So just wanted to challenge you with that Acts 10 passage and think about how there's so many passages of scripture that become enlightened, that the wattage increases on once we put on the lens of seeing each other and ourselves the way God sees us instead of how the world sees us. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Victoria. I love how you, uh, I love the phrase that Victoria used of drinking the Kool-Aid of our culture, which is so true. Back to Allie, what you were saying, like kids haven't drank the Kool-Aid yet. And there's something about our culture, the way it raises all of us, you know, to, to put us in these categories. and. Um, and then we look at scripture passage after passage and God doesn't have those categories. <laughs> so, oh, so good. Thanks, Victoria. That's a good reminder. Um, so, hey, what we're going to do for our, our last um, 20 minutes or so together, um, we are going to continue our, our Bible study through looking at the kingdom. Um, let me stop right here. Not what I want. Hold on. 
There we go. Um, so if you were here last week, Alan Pumpkin was here. He did seven systems training with us at the church plant. We are going to pick that back up next week. We're just going to do a little bit. It won't be long and drawn out. It'll just be a few minutes each week. Um, but we're also going to continue our um, look at this Bible study through through the kingdom. And uh, God just put this on my heart. I don't know. This is what we're going to do for our, our launch team time. And it, at some point, it'll be something we do as a sermon series as well. Um, the kingdom, we, as we've talked about, it was interesting. Many of us who grew up in white churches didn't grow up uh, being taught about the kingdom. And those who grew up in black or uh, Lucera grew up uh, in Mexico. And, and she's like, we talked about the kingdom all the time. <laughs> and black churches are like, we talk about the kingdom all the time. And white churches, by and large, I don't want to generalize everyone, but by and large, talk very little about the kingdom. It was a lot about what we would call the gospel, getting someone into heaven, which is important. But there's a lot of time in between. <laughs> and there might be something to do that God gave us to do here on earth. And um, rather than just kind of look at our watches um, and, and wait till we, you know, wait till we die. And so the book of Matthew, uh, it mentions the word kingdom uh, 44 times, 48 times, something like that. I need to look it up again. I, uh, but it's, it's a lot of times it's where kingdom is mentioned over and over again. So we're just literally, whenever we see it, we're stopping. And we're having a little discussion about it. And what we're, what we're trying to bring out is what are the values of the kingdom. Um, so if you have a Bible, go ahead and open. And if you can pull out your phone, totally great. If you have a Bible app on your phone. Um, and if you don't, that's all right. You can just listen along. We're in um, Matthew 6, and we're starting in verse 24. So we've, <laughs> this is probably our fifth week doing this now, for the six weeks. So we've gotten through a few of these kingdom instances. And we're finding, again, as you turn there, the first time John the Baptist mentions the kingdom or Jesus mentions the kingdom, they say, repent, the kingdom of heaven is here. We did it. We talked about that sentence. And it, it, there, there is this, this, this act of new citizens entering the kingdom. So we're certainly not, we're not downplaying evangelism or downplaying the gospel, but there's many of these, these kingdom values um, that are quite in contrast to American values. And I think for some of us, um, we've grown up in church cultures where if you question American values, you're seen as, uh, you know, as un-American or unpatriotic or something like that. I think Jesus, if he were here, he would question many American values, right? And we know that because we have his words in scripture, like where he actually does that. Amen. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right, Victoria. Yeah, I mean, we uh, even, I, I guess, preached a couple weeks ago, and I got, they, the text they gave me was John the Baptist. Um, and He's like, you brood of vipers, he says to the crowd. Uh, and I'm like, man, he just wasn't messing around. There's these, and he's telling people all these values that are different than American values. Mm -hmm. And we just think, oh, yeah, that first century culture must have been really bad. <laughs> so it's so is awkward today. Um, so um, so what we're going to read this. It's kind of a lot of verses. Um, and maybe because of the, I would say we could go around and read it, but because of the puck, I, I may not do that. What I want you to notice when you read, many of you, uh, if you have an NIV or other translations, verse 24 is in a separate section, right? And then it stops and says, do not worry. And then there's another section as well. Is that, does that look right in your Bibles where like verse 24 and 25 are separated? And, and so normally, like if I was to preach on this, uh, I would just start at verse 25 and do a sermon on do not worry, which is a nice kind of comforting message. Verse 24 is not comforting at all. Uh, and it, when the Bible was written, there actually were no verses in the Bible. And this do not worry is not supposed to be there. It really interrupts the flow of thought. Um, and so we're going to read it all together. And when we do, we actually find the whole message of 25 to 34 changes in light of verse 24. Okay, so uh, let me read it, follow along. Uh, it says in verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So we're going to come back to that. Think about that. There's no break there. It says you cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. 
what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans, as non-believers, they run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. And here's our kingdom reference. This is why we're stopping here. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Whew. Now, is that a, a message we could use to hear uh, in America? <laughs> you guys think? Um, so what we do for our Bible study time is just discussion uh, based. Um, and so um, let me open it up to you all as I read that. And we'll try to be done close to noon, so it, uh, a, a little bit afternoon. Um, I, I, um, there's so, so much about this passage that, that strikes me. Um, I think that, um, first of all, let me open up to you all, and I don't wanna put you up, you don't have to all have to answer, there's no right answer to this. When you hear what Jesus is saying here, hopefully you can follow along as I read. Um, in America, I think we all would agree, we are taught messages like, what you have isn't enough, right? Um, that phone you have, it's not good enough. You got the seven, you need the eight. You got the eight, you need the 10. You got the 10, you need the 12, right? Mm -hmm. um, the car you have, not good enough. You got, you got a 2009, you need a 10. You got a 10, you need a 15. You got a that, you need a this. And, and, and really, I, I think our, our economy runs on this, right? Like, like that's, just, that's just how the economy runs. Um, what, is, what kind of messages do we get from social media? Social media, your thumb through your Facebook feed or whatever feed you, you might be using, uh, what kind of messages is your soul often getting from social media? Let me open it up to you all. Not all good, right? What do you see on, what do you see when you, when you look through your social media feed? Say that last part again about forgetting who you are. Um, I feel like when you look at social media, you kind of forget who you are because you see people have other things that you want. So like once you see that they have what you want, you're like, oh, I want to become that person. You know, I want to have this amount of, amount of money. I want to have this type of clothing. Um, like even like now for me, um, that's difficult sometimes too. Like I look at that, I'm like, oh, I really want that. Yeah. Um, but that's, I think that's just kind of what social media does to you. It, like now, like for me, I turned off all my notifications on social media. So like something like when I go on it, I'm like, oh gosh, I'm getting stuck. I'm getting trapped. It's like you're getting trapped into it. Uh, just basically seeing what other people have and you start imagining. It takes you out of reality. Um, okay. Yeah. Or thing, yeah. You know? That's good. Has everyone experienced something like that with social media? I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying, I mean, that it's all bad and you need to get rid of it, right? It's, I use it, but isn't it, it's good to know these things, right? Going in of kind of what, what it's, what it's doing to us. Um, any other um, social media uh, experiences or experiences in culture where that, that you relate to when it comes to what Jesus is trying to, to get us across here before we move on? I have to say, with Instagram especially. Okay. Um, 
I don't want anymore. Uh -huh. um, this is like uh, people are just showing here. Here's what I'm doing. I'm having fun all the time. Here's what I have. Here's what I'm wearing. Yeah. My possessions. Yeah. I kind of think lots of, uh, especially for women, body shaming, body type shaming. Yeah. I mean, they feel bad because they don't look like these people look like on Instagram. Yeah. And which is ridiculous because, you know, models are, that body type is like unrealistic. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very small percentage of what body types are. You know? Yeah. That kind of thing. But uh, that's why I stay off. But I mean, a positive thing that I have, like, for Facebook is um my cousin, um he's only about 16 days or 16 days old, and uh, he was born and he's already had um feeding tube and um you know a breathing apparatus hooked up to him, but now he's off with what I mean just it showed through prayer what you know he was not expected to live he was in NICU not expected to live the past couple of days now he's doing he's thriving now yeah yeah. Well, those are two good examples of a the positive and the negative side, right? So um, there's a lot of messages all around us that tell us um, what what we have isn't enough, right? Um, I I think it's to a point in our culture, like you know, we talked about tea earlier, and, and you steep a tea bag in water, and then. And you, you know, the longer you keep the tea bag in, the stronger the tea gets. And you hear a phrase like we're steeped in our culture, right? And I really think it's not a shaming thing, it's not a guilt thing. We just have to be aware that this is the culture we live in. I don't think we can get out of it, right? I don't I don't think we can actually uh fully obey and apply what Jesus is saying here because of the because of the culture that we live in. I think what he's saying here is so radical and and so different. Um, here's what I mean. If you look at, um, let's see what verse actually is that? Uh, my, when I copy and paste, I lose all my, I lose all my my verses. So let me find it in my, my Bible app here. Sorry. Um, if you look at um, verse 31 and 32, he says, you know, these are just, these are basic needs, right? Don't worry about what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear. When he says pagans, he's talking about non-believers. He's talking about people that aren't Jesus followers. He's like, look, this is what the this is what non-Jesus followers run after. And if we were to ask ourselves, do we run after um, we run after worrying about, you know, having enough food, having enough drink, what shall we wear? Um, we would say, yeah. We run after those things. We, that's pretty normal. It's pretty human it's like to run after these things. So verse 33 starts with the word, uh, but. So he's saying the pagans run after those things, but what you should run after is the kingdom, right? Is, is, is God's kingdom. That's what you should be running after and his righteousness. And then if you do that, um, all these things will be given to you as well. And I, I don't think he means... Um, health and wealth, you know, prosperity. If you if you seek God, you'll get all these riches. He's saying these are your these are the basic needs of life, and in the kingdom, everybody's basic needs get taken care of. By some of you gave those examples, even right of other people in the kingdom. Like we take care of each other. We take we take care of those needs. Um, and I just think that this passage. Um, remember, I told you it's attached to verse twenty four. And what does verse 24 say? You cannot serve both God and money. Now, sometimes you hear these phrases and go, well, they're saying, it, is, it, is it a sin to have money? Is it a sin to be rich? I don't think it's that black and white. I don't, I don't, I don't think we can, uh, um, but if, if Jesus breaks it down and says, you're either serving God or you're either serving money. If we looked at our culture at large, would we say America serves God? or America serves money? Let's be real. What is the answer to that question? Money, 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 money. money. <laughs> right, Victoria? Yeah. And so we just have to stop there and go, whoa, Holy Spirit. Like, Holy Spirit, can you just do a work in me? Because I'm steeped in this culture, right? I am steeped in this culture. And I, I think that um, 
we have to ask the Holy Spirit, what does it look like in my family context to apply these things? Because honestly, um, you know, my wife would say an amen to this if she were here. Uh, if I was, it's different for me as a married guy with three kids on how I apply this than if I was, you know, single and uh, didn't have a spouse and children to, to provide for it and take care of, right? So we, we, have to, uh, we have to ask the Holy Spirit what this looks like. And even in that, I don't get to fully decide what I do with my money. It's a 50-50 decision, right? And so my wife and I together have to pray and discern. But I do think we have to start with saying, when we look at the kingdom, Jesus is telling us there's an opposition between God's kingdom and, Jesus, and the world's kingdom when it comes to what do we do with our, with our money and our stuff. And what I think is interesting, and I'm first to admit, I struggle with depression. I struggle with anxiety. Um, and we, many of us struggle with that in different ways. And one, it's, it is research proven that media contributes to that, right? Like it's social media is what we have today. Uh, Victoria, you know, you have the magazine from 1994 and it, uh, magazines are still around, but you know, for the last 20, 25, 30 years, um, magazine covers and, and, and you're, you're looking at the smallest, like Jake was saying, the smallest percentile your celebrity people, and we're looking at a point, point, you know, point zero zero one percent of the population thing. They look like that. They have that. I should look like that. I should have that. I mean, that's the water that we're steeped in, right? And so, some of our depression, some of our anxiety, what Jesus is talking about here uh, in this text, it's tied into this comparison game, like Marcus was saying, of trying to say, well, they have that. I should have that. They have that. I should have that. And so um, as we pause at this passage, um, I don't have, I think at church and we want our pastors to give us, a, you know, the three point sermon on how we need to apply this to our lives. I think it would be in, in many ways legalistic if I told you this is how you need to apply this. Um, that legalism means I'm going to give you a law. And if you follow this law, God will be approved. God will approve of you. Now, God approves of you because of Jesus. He loves you. Um, but God does want you to be free. His, his will, his hope for you as his child is that you're free from worrying about stuff, right? Like I, you've heard the phrase before, do you own your stuff or does your stuff own you? Man, I think we got to be honest about that, right? And, and I think... Um, all of this ties into this, this kingdom where um, I think the American value, the kingdom value of America is about ourselves. Take care of you. Take care of yourself. And Jesus' kingdom value would be what? Take care of others, right? And if we're all taking care of others, like if I'm taking care of Jake, and Marcus, and Marcus is taking care of Katie and me, and Katie's taking care of Carly and Marcus. Everybody's covered. <laughs> yeah, they're like everybody's getting taken care of, and and um, and we have it might be physical needs, like some you talked about. There's a need, and we posted it, and these needs were met. That's the kingdom of God. It might just be social needs. It it might be um, I'm I, I don't, I'm lonely. Like I need community. Our culture trains us to be uh, individualistic. It trains us to have our little silos and our little silos. And we'll come to church and we'll do a service and then we'll go. And what we hope to cultivate at Mosaic, and we're slow in doing it, you know, but is relationships where you can know people and they can know you and where you know you're not alone. Because this person's got your back. This person's got you covered. Yeah, Jay, go ahead. I just wanted to Make a comment. Um, yeah, it's I, and I. It's not my 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 uh, quote, but it's been called the upside down kingdom. Amen. So, pretty much the kingdom of God is opposite everything that we're taught in the world how the kingdom should be. Yeah. yeah so. And, um, so, you guys have heard Jesus say many times, "The first will be last, the last will be first, 
um, passages that talk about the, the, we talked about that with Matthew, the Beatitudes, right? Um, blessed are uh, the poor, the poor in spirit. Um, the kingdom is for, is for them. Blessed are the, those who mourn. The kingdom is for them. He's speaking to this crowd of people that were poor and poor in spirit and were mourning. And he's saying, in my kingdom, you are the blessed ones. And it's not that the rich aren't blessed as well. That's what's so cool about the first century church. You had the rich, the socioeconomically rich and the socioeconomically poor all together in community together. But you also saw a lot of rich people reject this message. And a lot of religious leaders reject this message because they had the power. And Jesus said, it's actually not about you gaining more and more power. It's about you giving up power, humbling yourself. And then Jesus goes and dies on the cross, right? And that's our God. Like, that's our model example. We, you, there's a cool word. You may have heard it before. I'll probably use it uh, in sermons. To live a cruciform life. And it's, what does it look like for your life to look like Jesus' life on the cross? Cruciform. Cruciform living. And that's what you're getting at, Jake. That's awesome. Um, I just want to leave us with that. I'm going ra- to wrap up, but I want to go around if anyone has thoughts or reflections. I'll start with... Um, Victoria or Adriel, do you guys know, uh, you can pass, but Zoomville, Adriel, you are Zoomville now. Adriel named Zoomville, and now he is Zoomville. So uh, either of you want to chime in on this passage uh, before we wrap up with prayer? Well, the thing that struck me most was that this is our assignment to um, be as totally opposite to what we've been trained as we can possibly be. And it's gonna take the spirit of God working in us to even make us conscious of what opposite looks like. But it's a a challenge that seems like it's going to be extremely rewarding. Mm -hmm. Just say, I'm not gonna be driven by this culture that I currently live in. I'm gonna be driven by the mandate that God has put on my life yeah it's great spirit of god and it's gonna be a fight it's gonna be it a serious be. fight we like that fight as eights on the enneagram don't we victoria yeah unfortunately oh, man. <laughs> we like <to> fight. <laughs> that's why i'm playing the church <laughs> it's a big fight adriel anything or do you what uh or no worries if not um, yeah, I think, I think that's, we're good. We're good. For now. Cool. Yeah. Any, uh, wrap up thoughts from our circle in personville? In here. Oh. I was, um, thinking not so much in terms of things and material items as much as time Mm -hmm. and experiences as I sit and look at social media through the holidays and thinking, wow, these families did some really cool things today. And, oh, look, they took their family there. And I'm, I can celebrate that and, you know, have encouraging thoughts about that. But then it seeps into, (laughs) wow, we kind of didn't do that this year. We forgot to go here. We forgot to go there. And even kids pointed out like we never did this this year and that was just things that we've done through the years together and experiences and and making time for all those things so I think that beats me up social media wise mm. like you know I oh I forgot to put that out for the kids or I forgot to do yeah. this or that so I think as we get busy in a, in our household anyway the time you know I can I can easily compare you know things I didn't accomplish or do yeah so yeah, thanks for sharing that. And there's so much in social media where, myself included, we're taking our best photos of ourselves and our families. And you look at your profile picture, you take the best picture of you, Disney. <laughs> like, like, where do I look the very best? And I'm going to post that. And like Marcus was saying, like, that's not our real life. Like, we don't always look like that. We're not, we don't always have those experiences. But if you just look through a feed, you go, man, I'm missing out. My life's my life stinks. I didn't do all this cool stuff. And everyone's like, I did this cool thing. But they'd all be saying the same thing because it's just like a highlight reel. 
Yeah. Relationships too. You're seeing people getting married and you're seeing people get engaged and you're like, oh, I wish I had that. But look, I, I do marriage counseling. Let me tell you, there's a lot going on behind the scenes of those pretty marriage, those pretty anniversary pictures. Where you, and just know that like, that's real life. That's real life. And that's what we need to be. Yeah. And, and Jesus wants us to get through kind of that. Yeah. Free from that, which is, yeah, it's good. Thank you for bringing that up. Anyone else? There was this poem that, uh, this poem that we read last year with my English class, and one of the opening lines was something like, I have a thousand friends, but I'm lonely, mm-hmm. and so it's like talking about mm-hmm. how social media is such like a, like a thing where you feel like everybody knows you and everybody sees you and stuff, but then later in the poem, it was talking about how... Um, like you lose sight of kind of like what Marcus was saying, you kind of lose sight of your own life and it turns more into like a people pleasing kind of thing. And um, it was saying how you miss opportunities throughout your life and um, just being so caught up in pleasing certain people, then you just, you lose sight. And um, another thing that I was talking about was how um, everybody gets so caught up in trying to please people that they totally like like hide the re- their like real self. Mm. And it was saying how um, like kind of what you were saying of like the best profile pictures and stuff. It's yeah. like you put up all like the pretty pictures, but then like it's like when it comes down to it, those are just uh for show kind of yeah and so it was saying how um social media kind of just makes everybody lose sight of everything almost just mm. to please their friends on social media yeah so, yeah that's good stuff Allie. that's that you're starting to see through starting to see through that it's so important that's so good yeah yeah i have those same insecurities i have all these you know, they call them friends, which is such an ironic word, right? And you go, yeah, you know, we get stretched really thin relationally sometimes too. I know I feel that way. And then I go, am I really investing in community? You know, like, uh, and, and there's a lot of, within discipleship, there's a lot of language about false self and true self and our true self in Christ. And, and like without any armor, you know, we put on armor to protect ourselves and Jesus is Jesus can be our armor, so we don't have to be put up these false, these false fronts. So yeah, so yeah, re- really appreciate even like the realness shared this morning um, because um, Jake, thanks for for being real with us on your first day, man. You know, and you, I love it, man. I, that's the planet I live on. I live on planet real. <laughs> so well, <laughs> welcome to planet real. Um, why, don't, why don't we wrap up? Um, we normally pray in our small groups, but we're all, we kind of stayed all together. So we'll just stay together to pray. And um, some things for, um, I'll go ahead and stop the recording here. Um,